All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular city council meeting for January 17th, 2023. Ms. Clare, please roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Absent. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Six members present. Right, thank you. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Preston. Father Lord, thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Please be in this meeting that thy perfect will be done. And Lord, please bless our citizens, our first responders, and our troops, Father, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, moving on, we need to do action on the minutes for the TIF meeting for January 3rd, 2020. So moved. Second. Um, there's a typo in the roll call. Oh, okay. Law Director Jeffries. Oh, I left off the. He did. Yeah. yeah. Jeffrey. My apologies. We're not even sure how to get most of it. Any other discussion, Council, on those minutes? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Lindsay was my first. Roadwald yes. was the second. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roval? Yes. Councilman Sir, second, six, zero. All right, moving on to the administrative uh, presentation and regular meeting on the move. Second. <laughs> I think okay. that's pretty Second. 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 All right. Any discussion? All right, you ready? Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Those are also accepted. Right, thank you. All right, moving on to communications. Uh, Mr. Paul Metzger is here from our homes uh, to go over any, I guess, Anything that was missed at the last meeting or any kind of uh, discussion with you in council, I don't know if you have any questions or need any input from him tonight. You as an audience. Mr. Bridge, did you have anything on your side? No, Mr. Metro is here for any additional questions that may be asked. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Are you going to be staying for a full meeting, sir? It's, well, and I know we don't, this isn't where we have a public comment, so, but when we get down to that, there may be questions, but I don't know what your schedule is. I don't want to. All right. Thank you, sir. <coughs> All I can say is I visited one of your sites uh, since our previous meeting, and uh, very nice homes. Uh, the models were, were very nice. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good upgrades that weren't astronomically priced, uh, whatever cabinets or Base boards or even, even insulation looking. Uh, so that would be a, a nice addition to the city. Thank you. Anyone else before we move on? All right. Moving on to city manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start with the city manager's report with our Clark County Sheriff's Office with Deputy Garner. Hello, council, sister. Um, the so stats for December 2022, we had over 182 calls taken in December. Of those 182 calls, there were 32 reports that were made. We had 31 assists with 20 criminal arrests. Of those 20 criminal arrests, four of them were felony arrests, three were misdemeanor arrests, and 13 were warrant arrests. We had 45 traffic stops with 36 traffic warnings nine moving uh, citations and uh, 451 business checks and we had two traffic crashes that we had taken. 
and that is December stats. Okay, any questions, comments, discussion? Yeah. Sir? What constitutes a business check? So, to, to, and it's different by every deputy, because okay. for me, a business check was, for example, Penny Lane, that's just down, you know, a couple doors down from us, going in there, talking to business owners. Checking inside the business, seeing how everybody's doing, getting to know them, and seeing how everything's going on there. Other deputies, especially third shift deputies, um, who don't have that luxury, a business check with them would be patrolling the exterior of the building, like checking Maybe, doors. Yeah, checking the doors to make sure there's no open doors, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Garvin. Thank you, Deputy Garman. Moving on to the city manager report, our fire chief, Chief Trusty, with the fire EMS report. Mayor, Council, citizens, uh, for the month of December 2022, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 94 EMS calls in the city, nine EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Park, due to Medic 52 being on response. Uh, we answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township, and we answered five mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Council, any questions? Yeah. Council, any questions? Thank you very much, Chief. Moving on, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Fire Chief. And moving on with our finance report, our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and members of the public. Mine's going to be a little longer than the Fire Chief. This is for the month of December our total revenue for the month of December was six hundred eighty six thousand eight hundred thirty dollars and seventy one cents for a total year to date of nine million three hundred five thousand seven hundred thirty eight dollars and forty one cents on our expenditures for the month of December we had eight hundred thirty nine thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and seventy eight cents for a total year to date of $7,809,544.42. Our statement of cash, our beginning balance in the bank accounts at the beginning of 2022 is $6,014,278.47. Our ending balance at the end of 2022 is $7,323,052.18. Uh, reconciliations are all bank are all reconciled and our uh, just to highlight um, an update from my town hall meeting the general fund ending balance was two million three hundred and twenty four thousand and fifty three dollars at the end of 2022 my next report is the monthly net income tax collection for our income tax and for the year of 2022, we had a total of $1,892,093.51, which ended up being a 8.74% increase of collections over last year. My next report is another annual report for 2022. Um, for the auditors, we are giving you the um, any of our credit card points credits that we have to use available. Um, we've used none, so the list is there of what we have available, and we'll be talking about using some of those next year. And then I have the mayor's court report for the month of December. The mayor's court took in $2,278 for a year to date of $11,838. I did a little profit and loss for the mayor's court for the year 2022 and the total again was $11,838 of revenue taken in from traffic uh, court costs and fines and the expenditures for the mayor's court was $15,714.22. There was some items of course getting it started so it had a loss of $3,876.22 for the year ending. And I put in my report for the year, the interest income trend. I know um, Council Member Cook always liked to have an update. Um, we received on our interest on the money in our um, bank, $34,680 in interest. And at the end of December, our interest rate was being paid a little over 4%, 4.19. 
And I have one more um, report I put in for the end of the year for the pool. The pool's revenue for last year was $90,302.60. Expenditures came in at $100,132.06 for a loss of $9,829. And there was no general fund transfer for that year. And the rest are the reports to be approved by council, but I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions, comments, questions for Ms. Harris? Yes. Sir. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> excuse me, Mayor's Court. Yes, sir. $7,000, what was the big expense in September for the Mayor's Court, since my memory is not that long? I did a breakdown, and um, I didn't bring it tonight, but it's, um, do you have it? I don't have it, but okay. I, know, I know what it is off the top of my head. Okay, if you want to go into sure. it. Sure, sure. Thank you. We did a series of building upgrades prior to, prior to the year starting. In September, we upgraded a lot of the locks to have the key fobs to make it a little bit more secure for um, all the parties involved. So now it's like when you go into that back door, you actually have to buzz yourself in two more times with these key fobs to get to where the police are. Um, and then it's just a, a, a general upgrades like that. But the vast majority of was upgrading the lots. Okay, stuff. thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Glass repair, too. Huh? Glass repair, we had to put them in new glass and everything. Was that for 2022 or 23? Right? That would be the 23. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept the appearance report. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Hagerson. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. It's accepted 6 0. And then any motion for the mayor's court? So moved. Second. There we go. <clears throat> Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. It's accepted 6 0. Back to you, Mr. Brewer. Thank you, Ms. Harris. So moving on with the city manager report under service report, our Sir, director of public service slash assistant city manager, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, mayor, members of council, members of the public. Start with the public works department. Uh, we have started our citywide tree trimming uh, that has started and will on go throughout the winter. We are ongoing with our winter de-icing operations. And then uh, there has been questions about the light out here for the parking lot. I, I did sign the agreement. It says Sing, but that wasn't me. Um, on one six to install that Cobra light, uh, they could be up to 45 days uh, due to AES uh, requiring permission to go on their electric pole is why it could be up to that length of time. Under the water department, sanitary survey is this Thursday and Friday, the 19th and 20th. Uh, no update on our pitless adapter as we are still waiting on materials. And then the uh, next bullet point is hydrant replacement to begin in a couple weeks. We've already started, uh, hydro we've hydro-excavated two areas for the hydrants, um, but as soon as we got a, a late phone call last week to do our sanitary survey, we have switched gears to get all the paperwork and things ready for the EPA to come visit our water plant for the next couple days. So we'll hop back on that whenever uh, she leaves. Uh, sewer department, there is a, an update. The secondary clarifier number one, I've kind of condensed a couple bullet points from past uh, reports. Secondary clarifier number one and the primary clarifier number two, uh, ordinances in front of council tonight to award a contract to Peter, for Peterson Construction. The estimated uh, amount of American Rescue Plan funds that we will be utilizing is 286500 And in Ohio Public Works Commission funds, about 98500 uh, by being able to bid these two um, uh, clarifiers together, we actually, uh, where I previously thought we would be using some of the fund balance of wastewater, uh, right now it's looking like we will not. And we may be able to uh, put back some uh, ARPA funds maybe back into another project. Not won't be a whole lot, but it's a possibility. Uh, down to road resurfacing, I'll be working with the county here shortly to see where we'll be moving with that. Uh, Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two. Uh, I did sign the engineering agreement uh, for that. So we have started uh, engineering. That will probably be up for <coughs> around March timeframe with a by uh, fall completion date. 
And then the CDBG grant for the Carlisle Park, working on getting an engineering agreement together for that one so we can start engineering that project. And again, you guys will have a uh, ordinance, or I'm sorry, resolutions in front of you for the Nature Works grant. And then below that report, um, there is a, a, what's gonna be a new flyer that will be passed out after tonight's council meeting. It's called the Backflow Prevention and Cross Control Connection. It's protecting a public water system. So basically, what is a cross connection? It's any place where you have a public water utility and then you have a potential of having a, a private well and that will still be connecting to the city's water supply some way, shape, or form, uh, form. And what the issue is, is if we get a back siphonage in our system, which water moves, it's, it's under pressure, but the water moves within the system. So sometimes you'll see a, a, when we get in depth in our meter readings, you could have a plus, but then the water can actually come back out of here and go back in. So it moves throughout the system. If for some reason we were at a depressurization or a back siphonage um, state and we were still connected to someone's private well that is around agricultural, we can suck that water in and contaminate the whole system. So as far as I know, we, we've been working on inventory and we have not had one connected at this point, but we have to go um, through and verify some of the wells that we just found this year that we're, we're not sure we have to camera those, make sure they're not connected or make them get disconnection uh, of that system. It is not illegal to have a well in the city limits uh, for agricultural purposes. Again, it just needs to be disconnected. Um, with that on the auxiliary wells, depending on when we audit, we will be coming around asking certain questions. Is this well around agriculture? Is this well around pesticides, herbicides? Is this well around uh, various or a pasture watering holes, things like that that could be high hazard? There's a potential where we may require a backflow preventer. The level of backflow preventer, because there's various levels of the, the hazard that you have, from a RPZ, which is very high hazard backflow preventer, to where you might just need a small one. Um, those may be where we might have to require those on a, on a well, um, even though it's not connected to the city water supply, just in case someone would ever connect a garden hose because I've heard it has happened in other areas and that that device then will need to be inspected annually by the homeowner. So um, there's a lot of information in the two sides. This will be going out to, like I said, all our websites. Um, this is part of our inspection this uh, Thursday, Friday, along with uh, going through these inspections and it, it's a big deal. They're, they're looking to, if we, per se, do not put a backflow preventer on any well, we have to inspect that every year. And right now we're at 50 some wells a year. It's 50 and down? Uh, yeah, we're, we're somewhere around 50. Um, and that's the ones we know of. Uh, I just found an old night, uh, Vicki Taylor dug through her old files and we got more wells that popped up that we may not be aware of. So it's, it's a big endeavor to find out if there's any, you know, there could be some in basements. Some of these homes are from the 1800s, so there could be wells and basements. So we're just trying to get that all cleared up, and um, that is it for that part. I can entertain any questions on my report, backflow, auxiliary private wells, or anything like that. The uh, tree trimming, is that something you guys are doing, or, or did, was that subbed out? No, we're, we're doing that. It's more or less the right-of-way trees that have been dead, or you know, we got to get out and get some things cleaned up. The uh, Main Street project, do we have a ballpark idea when that is going to start and how long it will take? So it's being engin engineered right now. I just uh, talked to O'Dot the other day. It has to be completed before the um, festival. That's really the deadline. They're giving me as much time as I need to be able to get the curb work done, um, and ADA stuff put in before they do it. They just, they're getting ready to sell or award their contract um, this spring. Is that just a repaving or? Is that yeah, it'll, uh, shave and pave, mill and fill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I just have to piggyback off on Mr. Weissman. The, um, the section on main meter down towards the uh, water bottle, you know, where it's been broken up a few times. Mm -hmm. We talked about the concrete underneath. Is that getting repaved in that area too? All of Main Street from Water Dog to Galewood Drive will be mill and filled. Okay. There will be no sub base repair. So, I mean, we. So they'll shave two inches off and put two new inches. Um, 
we are looking to get a project together probably in about 10 years. It seems far away, but this was just 17 years ago when I was talking about this here. Right. Um, to uh, work as hard as we can to get that base out of there, get that concrete out. It just seems like it's in that area where it consistently is a problem. It, it's actually all the main street where you see those seams coming across. Mm -hmm. We have bad concrete underneath the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, there was actually, um, ODOT went out and did measurements of sub-base repair and they said it's just, it's too much. Yeah. Okay. And then one other one, which you'd heard it come up prior to the meeting start. Uh, uh, citizen was asking about Scott and uh, Gail with the, the term there, where it's been re-engineered numerous times, that term. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Because it went from being real wide. If you remember, they put a uh, like a little island in the middle where it you know, broke up mm -hmm. in two lanes. And then they went back and put a big loop in there. So it's kind of, if I'm remembering right, you're coming west into onto Galewood, if you go right onto the sky, it's a real sharp turn mm -hmm. because of the way it's built out so far. Uh, is that worth looking at to see if it could be shaved some so it's not so tight? Well, um, when I go, I got to think back to the project. So it was a CDBG project for Scott Street. Mm -hmm. uh, an engineer designed it because it was offsetting uh, intersection. Right. I'm not a big fan of the way it is. However, the right of way is still the same size. It just happens to bend around the right. I'm not a big fan. It's something we could possibly take a look at. Um, if they could cut some of the corner off and uh, maybe put what they call like a sloped apron, like a roundabout where you got an inside apron that they can still drive on, but uh, have curb there. Yeah, I can take a look at it and see. I just don't want to change something up too much that maybe was approved engineering or traffic wise through an engineer for the CDBG. Yeah, if you don't mind taking a peek, that'd be awesome. Just see what you think. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Appreciate the report as always. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kiko. And moving on to city manager's report under informational items. Um, feed store land for road cut due to development. I have contacted the property owners. I see they are actually in the audience tonight. Uh, as we discussed on the phone, I will meet with them at the end of, near, near the end of the month. It looks like we'll set that up meeting up tomorrow. Um, so in addition to development questions that we have, I, we had the uh, legal opinion, legal memo go out to council regarding the Cowan property, and we have decided that we do not have to force that annexation, which is good news for everyone involved. So hopefully you're happy with that outcome. Um, so land use under the township zoning, they are allowed to farm. Um, so basically when I was talking to email in the county person a couple weeks ago, any farming they have to do right now has to be in the rear of the yard, has to be 50 feet away from any property line. They do have the availability to go to the county and get a variance on that to not be within 50 feet of the property lines. But as of now, they would be able to farm even though they're not in a city and it's an island. Um, so that's good news for them as well. Uh, safe Haven defense window films. I know we talked to council about that a couple months ago. We did decide to go ahead and go with that project. Um, so um, they got a final things to do with caulking of the windows, um, but our police substation and mayor's court um, is all ballistic proof. So if you're standing in the building and someone's trying to shoot in, the bullet will not get you. So the two large windows are ballistic. The one door in the middle is um, riot proof, but when you get into that foyer, there's a big square window back there that is ballistic. So all the windows going to that front part of the building is, are, is ballistic proof. Um, we also did our city administration building. So we have 331 South Church Street. Now the only ballistic proof we did there is where Angela sits behind the window. The rest of the building has what they call riot proof in there. So someone had taken four or five hours to get through those windows. So all the perimeter windows of the city building now have that riot film on there. So it's gonna be very hard for someone to break into that city building. Um, so thanks to council for giving us your opinion on that. I think it's gonna work out very well. I know a lot of the cops were excited about it. Uh, the mayor's court will be excited about it. So I think it was a good investment for the city. Um, rules of council, I know that's on tonight. So any amendments council should choose to do can be done prior to the final vote. Uh, 2023 board members, I'm gonna push that back for approval from council to the next meeting, first one in February. I'm still waiting to hear back um, from certain members. Uh, we have the intergovernmental joint meeting that is set for 1.30, uh, January 30th of 2023 here at Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, the food lines open at 6 and the meeting starts at 6.30. Uh, the food will either be catered by Franco the Foodie or Lee's Chicken. Uh, so I got a quote for Franco. Um, I wanted to, to, to debate that a little bit more and make the final decision. 
City administration, we have a new lunch hour that we're closed between 12 and 1. Uh, as of now, we have heard known issues with those new operational hours. Council, have you heard any feedback? If you do, please let us know. Uh, but it seems to be going off pretty, pretty well. 2023 fire and EMS and health levy, a certificate of estimated pro property tax revenue that is attached. Uh, that is the resolution that council passed a few meetings ago that's directed the county auditor to certify how much this uh, levy would bring in. If any questions on that, it's at the end of the city manager report. Uh, 2022 year end numbers are final. Um, so we're waiting on some estimated, uh, some new amendments to be um, approved by the county auditor and then the council will get a new resolution. So we got to get some adjustments made, but as soon as all that is done, I will be updating the Excel document, giving you guys a full version of the uh, budget opposed to just the appropriation budget. So that is all I have under informational items. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Mm -hmm. Council, any questions for Mr. Bird this evening? Yes. yes I got a call from a pastor here in town. Their church just recently bought a bus mm -hmm. to take people back and forth to church. Sure. Uh, he says he was told by the city that he cannot park the bus behind their church. We are looking into that. That issue was just the violation of this issue today, I do believe. Okay. So we're looking into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is there an ordinance for prohibiting? Yeah, it's a commercial, it's a heavy vehicle in a residential zoned area, but however they are a church, so I'm going to get involved and probably allow them to keep the bus. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering my question. So those are located into the code, but they technically I can see where a code enforcement officer would issue the violation, um, but it's a permitted use in the district that's already was approved. So I think a school bus for a school bus children to go in Sunday school is an incidental use. Um, however, um, it is a school bus. So it's not dictated that it's owned by a church. So I have to have a talk with the owner about that first. And I have not seen it in person. I've seen the tail end of it. So as long as it doesn't say to come to local schools on it, it is identified for the church use, then I'm sure we can work something out. Would that require uh, amending the ordinance? Mm, no. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I would not advise council to amend the ordinance. There's, it's, there's no reason why a normal resident who lives on North Adams Street should have the school bus parked in their driveway. So I'm saying so, but in that case, with this particular case, it's a use in subordinate. I mean, not in subordinate, but in, in conjunction with the use of the building. Okay. But if you approve the school bus for the church, and it cannot have by state law to come to the school district retina, it has to have a church bus retina. It. The red lights has to be. That, I don't know. You can get from anywhere. Just, RJ transportation. I, and some I've, I've change, had so. I've had school buses or. Church buses and other churches I belong to. Sure. Uh, and I'm sure he'd want to personalize the, uh, it. Pardon me? I'm sure he'd want to personalize yeah, it. Yeah, it, it'll be designated as a school bus. But if you approve that and then whenever you decide to leave in 20 or 30 years and the next manager says, no, we're not going to do that, that it's, creates a it, problem for the for It's the, in your insurance in your code to already allow it. It's a use that has already been approved by okay. the body at some point in time to have a church in a residential district. Right. It's already a permitted use. So and as long as it's parked behind the church or on in their parking lot, I, I don't see a problem with it. And so I'm glad you're He's not parking it on the street. It would probably be a letter go out so you have to keep it in the rear and be labeled as a school but right. for the school. But I think the law would dictate the labeling, but mm -hmm. the state law would. But uh, I'm glad you're working with them to. Uh, it literally just happened at like one o'clock today. I'm sitting around there. Uh, what, church <laughs> is it? what church is it? Uh, Living Grace. Living Grace. It's Adam, Adam Street. Adam Where? Street. Adam Street. Oh, Adam Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they got a big enough lot there to park about. So. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. But that issue, that was an issue off the of citizen complaint, by the way. We didn't just go tag a citizen complaint about it. Living Grace, the school bus. I drove back there many. I drive the resident. I've never noticed it back there. I drove by it. I drive North it's Adams. Not, it's not parked on Adams. It's parked inside the way back there. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I drive by there multiple times a week, and I've never seen it on the street ever. And, I, and on top of that, I was told he just bought the bus literally like like a week ago. May just not approach. I have a friend who lives right across the street. Mm -hmm. Twice a week to see it. I know. <clears throat> you 
If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium and leave your name and address. And please try to keep the comment or questions in five minutes. Looking for the podium? Right back. Right in the very back. In the center. Kevin White, my wife Rose and I, we uh, own property at 1833 North Dayton Lakeview Road, otherwise known as Homestead Feed and Supply. Uh, I've been watching the developments over the last few weeks. I try to keep this under five minutes. I'm planning on meeting with Mr. Bridge here soon, but just for opening um, familiarity with the new de plan development, uh, Ms. Ms. Eggleston, have you read the, I'm going to ask each member of council this question for the record, have you read and do you understand and have a firm uh, grasp of the traffic study that was put out, I think it's 75 pages? Yep. Uh, Council Lin uh, Councilman Lindsay? I have. Uh, Mr. How do you say that? Roadball. Roadball? Yeah. Uh, yes, I mean I read it when it first came out. No, I I need to refresh myself. But. Okay, Mayor Lowry? Yeah, I was in the meeting when they presented it to the city, so I mean, it's a large document. I'm not gonna say that I can understand it down to a perfect T, but yeah, I got the gist of it. Uh, Councilman Graham? I was also at that meeting. Um, I can't uh, quote it from memory, but I have a working knowledge of it, yes. And Councilman Bond? I have not read through the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> I was here the one night when this gentleman uh, and the city manager went through the, the development and uh, is it fair to say, I mean it's my impression that just from being at that short meeting, I've only been to one or one and a half meetings, that there's more corporate knowledge and understanding and expectation of what the development is going to look like than there is of the traffic study slash plan. At least in my view, it's much easier to understand his presentation and the documents that accompany it than it is the traffic study. I'm interested in if you have a, an opinion on that. I would agree with that. I mean, that traffic study was, I mean, it, it, it was, yeah, uh, at times a little warm, uh, hard to follow, you know, kept jumping back from, you know, from whether it was Addison, North New Carolina, back to Lake and Maine. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I would agree with that statement. I mean, uh, the presentation for the development was very um, yeah. easy to follow and laid out. Um, I agree. I'm sure what you presented to Mr. Bridge uh, was much much more in depth. Yeah. Um, but what we what we received was was very easy to follow. First, the traffic study. Okay. But when the traffic study, I mean, you know, they were they were assigned not only to 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 examine north of town but also west and south. I mean they were they they were they were told to, to give a traffic study as a as a whole for the city itself. Not just for that one development. Okay. I mean, at that time we were obviously <coughs> three developments into that traffic mm -hmm. study. Four. Uh, yeah, four. four. Yeah. So um, it, it, you know, I'm sure if we would have said we just wanted a traffic study for the north end of town and what that particular development where there are those two uh, it's been much easier to, to follow, but being that it is a very comprehensive and in-depth traffic study. I agree. So the one through four developments um, represent 1,668 new homes in the aggregate. The population of New Carlisle in 2021 is 5,500 thereabouts, and each and there's roughly 2,000 households and a membership average occupancy of 2.6 persons per dwelling. So if we take the 2.6 number from the census and we multiply it times the 1668, you're going to add around 4,400 new persons to a city that has a current population of 5,500. 
so it's nearly a double in the city's population. On the traffic study, I looked at the trips and depending on peak versus normal by each one, R2 was 202 to 279 trips, RD3 was 340 to 245, and then the commercial part of RD3 is 247 to 632 trips, RD4 was 438 to 619 trips, and RD1 was 201 to 277. She asked me if I had my phone turned off. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> if you look, and I'm not an engineer, I am kind of an engineer by background and training, and I did put input into the state on the 41-235 tra traffic circle, and, and I think that was just an exercise in formality, not really in substance, because they, they ignored everything I said, and about 75% of what I warned them about occurred, and then they, it's a problem now, even though it's got a bastardized fix to it. But it was not installed properly. So my concern here is, number one, Rose and I are not opposed to seed growth. We understand that that's the way uh, life is. And we understand the relevancy of eminent domain, should that be the course of action that the city council and leaders choose to pursue. It wouldn't be my first choice, and I don't think it should be the, I think other avenues should be explored. My only concern with these four developments is the fact that I think the traffic dynamic is being underappreciated in the sense that if you put a traffic signal at the new proposed cutout road that connects Addison to 235 across our property, that signal is less than two-tenths of a mile from the signal at Speedway and uh, what is that lake, I think, that cuts through there. So with these, with a doubling of the population and then the commercial area there, I think it's highly likely that you're going to have people sitting at green stoplights because of congestion less than two-tenths of a mile north of them. So I'm not an engineer, I'm not a civic engineer, but I think that's a concern that if you've not raised it, you probably should. And what would relieve that would be to move the connector road farther to the north to decongest the inner part of the city and the proposed commercial and residential sites. One option that seems pretty obvious to me, but I don't know if there's probably good reasons why the city manager and others have not looked at it, is where Addison cuts out to the north and west, there's a tower there. It seems to me that that would be the more logical place to run a connector to 235. It would go through, I think it's commercially zoned uh, farmland, and it would be north of the, the uh, the assisted living complex and it would offer enough space to decompress the future traffic associated with these homes and the commercial area on the east side of 235 notwithstanding the proximity between stoplights would be increased so if you've already looked at all this i apologize but if you've not looked at this i recommend you take a, a hard look at it because even though i'm the property owner there if you choose to put the road in there, you know, it'll happen and we'll work through it together. But what I'm telling you is, if this is not done properly, and I have full confidence the developer has good plans, they know what they're doing, they're going to do a good job with the buildings. But the traffic piece can be screwed up pretty easily. And I think we've seen that all over the country in certain places that maybe you even have resided in before. I'm military, so I've been around a few, few places, and I'd hate to see everything turn into a nightmare and then have to be redone at a very high cost. So those are some of my concerns with the traffic pattern. On the recommendations page of this document, there were seven, I think, recommendations. Maybe you can clarify for me, but recommendation number one 
is install a connector road from Addison to Main Street, and then recommendation number five is install a connector road from Addison, New Carlisle to Main Street. If one of you or any of you or Mr. Bridge could speak to those two recommendations, they, I'm sure they're not redundant, but I don't have an understanding of what the difference might be. Could be a typo, I don't have it in front of me. Or they possibly looked at another location along Addison that would connect on the main street. Okay, my last point, well I do think clarification on these recommendations, which I don't, I think it, uh, it's page five in that report, is probably merited. But my last point, I thank you for letting me go a little over time, is more, I guess, directed to the planner and maybe the developer here for, for Arbor Homes. The, if you look at the site plan for the uh, for the Arbor Homes to the west side of Addison, they have the base. They have the proposed infiltration basin located at the southeast corner of the development. Then directly north of that, there's a, there's ten homes on a street, and I don't you know I'm not sure what that street will be named, but that street empties out onto Addison New Carlisle Road. It's south of the utility right-of-way, and it's south of the assisted living complex, and it's probably directly across of the existing thoroughfare that connects 235 to Addison for my property. So, one of the impacts that I have a keen interest in, besides what I've just told you about, is the fact that if we put that road there as planned in conjunction with the spur that is planned on my property we're going to make i'm pretty sure i mean i i can't objectively say this i could get somebody to opine an opinion on it but right now we have a lot of cut throughs on our property uh, and it damages my property and i you know i don't get compensated for that and i can I can put stuff up to block that, but we have semi-tractor trailer traffic that comes in there from both directions and delivers to the tenant uh, businesses there. There's three businesses there. So when we put a road there in the proposed uh, subdivision for Arbor Homes, it, it looks like it will be directly across Addison from the driveway that goes to my property which I think will only exacerbate the cut through problem and the, the access road, the spur that's proposed will probably exacerbate that problem too because people aren't going to want to go to a stoplight if they can get over to 235 and cut through my uh, property where the feed store and the other two businesses are located. So yes, those are parochial concerns that are you know selfishly mine and roses uh, but I would ask that they not be ignored, at the very least consider what options might be there should all these plans come to fruition to mitigate that because I think this is a safety issue. I think decompressing the traffic at the southern part of the peninsula of property that separates 235 and Addison is probably a logical thing to at least consider. So I'm early in this as far as looking at the nuts and bolts of it. I don't want to leave the impression that Rose and I are obstinate and not uh, reasonable to deal with, but I really want to underscore that you guys need to get this traffic plan right because it, it, will, it will be the thing upon which a lot of other quality of life and safety issues ride upon. And that's my, ma my main concern because you know, I'm almost 60 years old. I probably won't own this property forever and I'll be gone. But I think as stewards of the community, if, if you've not looked at other options like a traffic circle farther north in the peninsula itself or a cutout road that's north of, the, of what I described earlier, if those have not been analyzed by an engineer, whatever the case might be, I think it's prudent to look at these uh, at this point. And, and I'm finished speaking, I'll sit down. Any of you and all of you are welcome to respond to the concerns I've mentioned, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you guys for coming for that feedback. I mean, the only thing I would say is I, I appreciate you yeah. bringing that up and, and 
voicing that concern because that's been one of my concerns with that is the traffic and, and just thinking through. Um, so we do this right and so it doesn't become a problem. And it, I have not seen a good traffic presentation. I think it would be helpful for me if there was a way that we could get kind of like what the developer gave us a good presentation from a traffic person that can show us, you know, these are the things that have been uh, looked at. We've, we've looked at all these options and, and you know, and explain it a little bit better. So, so it would just be helpful. I got some information. I thought we already had the traffic guy come and give a presentation. I could be wrong about that. We had a lot of special meetings. But I thought that they did come in. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't, we haven't had a, we didn't have a traffic guy come in. We got the report. We got the, we got the study. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the traffic study to me was not complicated at all. Really, you're looking at what our current volume is versus what the new developments are going to generate. Yeah. And that, that is broken down to peak hours and non peak hours. But it's also, um, it's, it's also just suggestions. It's not necessarily you have to do. No, they're just a, suggestions. Right, yeah. right. Like we can do the project without doing that cut to this. But to, for some of Mr. White's concerns is, one, one of those developments got failed, so we won't be adding that much traffic to, I mean, that much yeah, population. One of the, developments the, yeah. um, the reason why they more than likely suggested the cut through where it's at is because the land that you had presented would be an astronomical. It's a very long stretch of land you have to go, so that's more cost to achieve the same purpose of cutting through. On top of that, you raise a very good, very good point about how far these traffic signals are away from another. They already looked at that. So they looked at that one that's going to be at Speedway versus how far it is for the one proposed by you. The reason that it's also attractive to have that is by you is because it's going to go straight across to hopefully what is going to be some sort of nine acre retail establishment with a Kroger, hopefully Lord knows what else. Um, on top of that, depending on if I can get, I don't have my GPS up, but where you suggested the city up north cut through when that's light industrial Bobo property, um, there is potentially going to be a signal at Siegler in 235 from the Twin Creeks development. So they also have to take that into consideration too. So there's a lot that goes on. Um, Choice One is a very respected engineer firm. Um, they specifically had traffic engineers working on this. I can reach out to them and see if they would like to come and give a presentation. Um, but I am almost positive that one of those members came into this meeting at, at one point in time and, and gave you guys something. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. came with with one of the developers that they were just talking about that development. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe that's what and that was from Choice One. He, he was. Okay. Um, choice One agent. Sure. 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 Um, so I think I think they've taken a lot of these things into consideration. I think that's just where it was the best bang for the buck for the not as far as financial, but overall with all the variables come into play. I think that's where they thought was best. But the traffic study itself, it's 75 pages long. It, it, it's really not complicated. That's how the data is broken down to what the current is, what the new development is going to propose. Like, for example, if Twin Creeks come into play right now, 235 and Lake's fine. However, Twin Creeks development, the only thing the warranty is adding a right turn lane on by the old Vacant Speedway. So people just turn right continuously to go by, but go in front of the pool. So, um, but again, it's just, they're just suggestions. Um, but if council wants me to try to get someone in here to do a full presentation on that, we can definitely um, we can definitely advise that. Um, but I I thought for sure that Mr. Gottmeyer had come and discussed that traffic study mm -hmm. with the council. Well, and I don't know that at that point in time, the development I, I don't know which one it is now, the one on the um, what would it be the, the east side of the road. Like there hadn't been a plan there for a commercial mining for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at that time, when they did the traffic study, it's, that was already in there. Okay, I didn't know if, it, if that was within it at that point, but um, I guess for me it would be helpful to see what options they ran through and say, yeah, we considered this, this, and this, and this is why we came up with that. Because even though you know they proposed the the one cut through, I don't know what other options they considered. I don't think the, the report showed that that I remember seeing, and I, I didn't read the whole thing. It was a long report, but it would be it would be helpful to have, maybe have some interaction. With How them. long ago was that emailed to council? 
I see one for DR Horton. That they well, DR Horton had their separate one, and yeah. then that city. Um, I want to say it was like in mid November or around that. It could be a little bit sooner. But one of the things that, you know, with, with the possibility of the developments going up and with businesses like you mentioned, we've all seen areas like that. I mean, I always think of, um, uh, shoot, I just took one right there. <laughs> Springfield. The bad, the real Beckle, bad. Beckle. Beckle, thank you. Mm -hmm. like Beckle is horrible now, you know, over in, over in to uh, Hugo on 202 where they're doing a lot of stuff. There's just so many little outlets, of different roads come out, and it's just, you know, crazy. So if this does go forward, Let's try and tie some of these businesses in with maybe roads behind them and one or two exits and entrances mm -hmm. on each side so that you don't have so many shoots coming out and cause all these access yeah. roads. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge. Uh, the light that you spoke of uh, up by your property, Mr. White, <coughs> would that not be speaking to the other lights like the other ones on uh, Main Street yeah, Talk now? Yeah. So, when the traffic would be heavier congested, all the lights would be green to get the traffic through town and clear that congestion out. The, correct. correct, correct. And you gotta uh, understand. I know, because we have the same setup now that Tip City has, and I know I've been through there when they've been busy as all get out, and every light on Main Street's green until the traffic clears out some, and, I don't know how it works, but the lights knows that the traffic is lighter and then or it knows that there's cars backed up on the side streets and then it'll stop and, and let those cars out. But because I stop here, the lights on past me are still green. It's letting this traffic out. Mm -hmm. So it, it works pretty well uh, in, in uh, Chip City when, when I've been there during business hours and rush hours or whatnot. I can only assume and I hope the same thing will work there like it does there because it, it, the traffic flows pretty well. Uh, yeah, unless you get hit by the train and then everything's messed up. Mm -hmm. They don't, the train don't uh, go with the traffic lights for some reason. I don't understand that. They should, they should stop, you know, let us go. But, uh, but uh, you mentioned uh, the intimate domain for your property. I am hoping that through talking with the city manager uh, and some agreement can come to if we have to go there, but I will tell you I am not a big fan of intimate domain, uh, just like I'm not a big fan of crossing county lines for, for residential or annexation to another city. Uh, this is nothing new to the city manager. Maybe the intimate, intimate domain is, but we had conversation about crossing county lines. And I told him I didn't like when Huber Heights did it. I used to, in fact, that property I used to have in, in uh, Miami County, Huber's knocking on my door right now, or that property's door. So I had some land I could have sold it and booked. Uh, I sold it long before it ever got to that, to that point. But I, I, I just wanted to let you know that, that I think the, the traffic situation with the lighting or the way they talk, the lights talks to one another. I think it uh, it won't be as big as problem as what we think. And like somebody said, the the uh, one project is gone. So the traffic study based on that is really outdated because the numbers are going to be lower because it took into the, the consideration there at Lake and Main Street. With, with, it was the one in Miami County that we voted that we did not go with. Okay. Reel us back then. Yeah, that, that, we've been, that, we'll talk after the, after the meeting. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um, so with that subject, just before we move forward to anyone else, in the office, before we leave that, do you <clears throat> want to ask the city manager if you have a spokesperson from the traffic <coughs> study center? I think it would be beneficial. Presentation do do we need a motion for that? Or? Yeah, you'll need a motion. I'll make the motion. But I, I'm again, I'm still looking at my inbox because I remember Gottmeyer coming and he wouldn't come just to speak on one development. Did you find that email? I'm looking now. Yeah, but I, I, don't really I looked and I don't see it. I don't remember I don't see anybody it. coming in to talk on that. Pardon me, ma'am? I think I remember that name. Just Gottmeyer. Yeah. I remember I the name. Sure. I don't remember. Tell you what, yeah, we, could, we can set something up. Um, 
Let me see if I can get it. Moller is his name. So he made a motion. Yeah, yeah, Lindsay did. Second on this item. To have. To look into having a, a representative yeah, traffic. traffic and then, can I ask if that's going to impact anyone's vote tonight on a development? I mean. I mean, it would be nice to would know. It, would it, yeah, I mean, it, it, wouldn't it kind of be good to know these things before we move forward? Well, that, no, this is, this is the, okay, I'm yeah. not trying to be unprofessional. No, no, this I point understand. Time. We've had this information. Because you've had this information now for a very long for time. Half a year. Right. And now is not the time to wait in the last minute to ask questions. No. To me, it's just like if the vote's going to be impacted, the vote needs, still needs to go on and needs to pass. Because there's still way, well, more, way more to go with final engineering, and that's just an option. So I don't. The traffic study's not set. Yeah. Yet. So there's still time and room to adjust. So I don't want the, the, the chance of this voting failing tonight because of lack of information on the traffic study. Yeah. I think we should. And even with the current two developments, I mean, I don't think this, mm -hmm. this, if we go the route, I don't. It's not going to happen. I mean, it's not going to be the stage one process. They're still going to. We'll have to get it figured out pretty quick because if we do the cut through, I'm going to propose that be captured by the TIF. So we're going to be talking about that TIF structure here pretty soon. So I'll go ahead and get that presentation for as soon as I can get it on. Um, but I don't want the overall vote tonight to fail with, with the lack of the track. So I think that we'll be able to find a remedy. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Oh, all right. <coughs> Councilman Lindsay. What are we voting on, ma'am? The to have the rep come and talk about the traffic study. Yes. The motion that you motioned for. Yes. <laughs> well, Councilman Rodewald. He got me thinking about something else. Yes. And I Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That's a six zero. All right. Now back. Hold on. Back to <laughs> our agenda, which is comments from members of the public. Any other comments, questions, feedback? All those. Mm -hmm. Just on anything which we already had. I'm going to hold you to five on this one. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I got Two questions. One came from the assistant director uh, presentation with respect to, to wells. So can anyone explain to me why or what the logic is of forcing backflow preventers onto wells that are not connected to a city water system? So this comes down from the rule makers at the Ohio EPA through the federal EPA, and they basically said if there's a possible chance in a high hazard area that you would put a backflow on there for the chance that someone would hook a garden hose on, run it to the sink, and then you would have backflow. Okay. It's just that chance. Yeah. yeah you're right. you're Second question is unrelated, and that is that if, as the uh, as as Randy Bridge said, you're going to take the vote on the annexation piece. Um, is there any legal concern that would come to fl to play that could put the city in it liable after the fact? should something traffic related or otherwise stop the development that's part of the annexation from going on. In other words, is there any liability risk with taking the vote and approving that without knowing all of the variables to the future pieces to the puzzle? Um, I'm, I mean, they had a traffic study done and uh, by a reputable engineering firm by council, so I, would, I wouldn't think there would be any liability concerns because of that. Okay. Anyone else? All right, so, uh, let's see. Uh, resolution, Ms. Barter, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, we have resolution 2023-04, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager or the Director of Public Service Assistant <coughs> City Manager to enter into a Nature Works Local Assistance Grant Agreement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for the Municipal Pool Upgrade Project. Second. And an explanation to this resolution. 
Uh, we had a resolution earlier in 2022 that allowed um, our service director, uh, assistant city manager, to apply, excuse me, for the Nature Work local, uh, for the Nature Work grant. This actually allows us to fill out the contract, and then we'll have a subsequent one to uh, expend the funds. Council, any questions? All right. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes <coughs> zero. I've got resolution 2023-05, introduction to public hearing and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $35,000 for the municipal pool upgrade project and to satisfy the requirements of a recently awarded NatureWorks local assistant grant. So moved. Uh, an explanation of this resolution, this piggybacks off the one we just passed. This allows um, us to expend the $60,000, to which we will get 75% of that reimbursed, uh, which is $45,000. So we'll be upgrading the pool with three new gazebos and a concrete bad for an out of pocket cost of $15,000. <laughs> you ready, Mr. Burner? All right. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodel. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Uh, yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes six zero. All right. Moving on here. Resolution 2023-06R. Introduction, public hearing, and action. Tonight, a resolution amending and adopting the new Carlisle City Council's City Council Rules of Council. First, Abelson. I made a mistake. What? I jumped over the committee reports, and I'm assuming she had something to say. And I, uh, I just I didn't see anything next to it. I assumed that she had nothing. So. Okay, let me know. Okay. So, it was, I Okay. Uh, I heard a first view from the mm -hmm. Councilwoman Eggleston. Oh, I don't okay. have a second, though. I didn't hear. Second. Okay. Uh, next explanation is resolution. Um, every year, council is allowed through our charter municipality to adopt what they call, call rules of council, and that lets them know how the meetings are set, um, how things are supposed to go as far as time limits on speaking, how the agenda is set up. Every year, they have a chance to kind of review that, change things up. Uh, anytime they do that, they'll amend it before they vote. No amendments. Council, any questions, comments, amendments, all the above? I've got a list here. <laughs> Here's my list. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Robo. Yes. <clears throat> six, zero. All right, moving on, we have ordinance 2023-01. This was introduced on January 3rd, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with Peterson Construction Company for the purchase an installation of a primary clarifier and a secondary clarifier and the demolition of two clarifiers for the wastewater treatment plant. So moved. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance is to award Peterson Construction to do this project. Um, with that, Peterson has done our other two clarifiers um, out of our four. And also, uh, we will be going with Clearstream, which is the company they will be uh, getting their clarifiers from, which is the same brand as our current two that we've already had done. And that is in the amount of $385,000. You're doing a fine job, sir. Thank you. It's not a question. We've got to find a way to shorten this item. I mean, you're just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like the, uh, the uh, ACM or something. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll catch him outside here a little while. That was only 10 <laughs> words. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Zero. 
We have Ordinance 2023-02. This was introduced on January 3rd, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance to proceed with submitting to the electors of the city the question of the renewal of an existing 3.0 mil tax levy for the operation of the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Department. So moved. Okay. An explanation of this ordinance. We have a renewal of our fire levy up. Um, there is a two legislation set process for this. This is the second of the two. Once council approves this, I will take a little packet up to the uh, board of elect electors and they will put it on the ballot. But this is the final stage for us to get that on. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions? Which ballot would it be on? Um, May, May. May. May, yeah, yeah. May 2nd. Thank you, sir. Can you ready, Ms. Turner? Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Passes 6 0. Ordinance 2023 03 introduced on January 3rd, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance to proceed with submitting to the electors of the city the question of the renewal of an existing 1.0 mil tax levy for the public health purposes. Second. An explanation of this ordinance, uh, like the fire one we did, this is a renewal of our health levy, and it's 1 mil. And what the health levy does for the city, it provides um, some um, clinics for some uh, elderly, some single mothers. It also does restaurant inspections in the town, for, like Studebakers and stuff like this. So it does a, a very encompassing uh, array, of, array of tasks for the city. Discussion? Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Accepted 6 0. Ordinance 2023 04. This was introduced on January 3rd. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance rezoning approximately 79.136 acres of property bounded by Addison New Carlisle Road to the east, Drake Road to the south, Bayberry Drive to the west, and the Bethel Pike Township Line to the north to residential planned unit development RPUD and also approving a preliminary planned unit development plan. So moved. Second. Um, explanation of this ordinance, this is the first of three that council will be voting on tonight for the Arbor Homes development. Um, what this will do is just rezone uh, the acres that uh, Emily had um, mentioned and also approve their preliminary plan, uh, which may have to change slightly for final engineering. Thank you. Council, any questions or discussion? Any other, please? Councilman Lindsay. You second. Oh, I thought it was you. It wasn't you? I wrote you down. I'm, I uh, made the motion. He second. I just wrote it in the wrong boxes. My apologies. Okay, so you were the first. Rodold was the second. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roblo? Yes. That passes 6 0. I have Ordinance 2023 05. This was introduced on January 3rd, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a pre annexation agreement with Clayton Properties Groups Incorporated, DBA Arbor Homes, and the current property owners. So moved. Uh, explanation of this ordinance uh, since we are annexing this land into the city uh, this is a, a agreement is required um, it is just an agreement between the city and the uh, property owners to do certain things according to the annexation agreement Discussion, council? Ready, please. Okay. councilman Lindsay. yes councilman robo yes mayor lowry yes vice mayor grimm yes councilman bond yes Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And our last one, Ordinance 2023-06. This was introduced also on January 3rd, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance regarding the arrangement for provision of improvements for an RPUD planned unit development district. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to accept this ordinance. <laughs> <Second>. <laughs> Get it out there. You got to. 
fight for that. You gotta be forceful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I got the second. I got it. Oh, yeah, are you waiting good. on me then? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, this <laughs> explanation of this ordinance, this is the first and third and final one that would be done for council for this particular one. This just says at some point in time down the process, we'll make an arrangement of improvements. Um, basically what that means is securing a bond should the development not go through, we're not on the hook. Question. Question. Mr. Bridge. Yes. Could you repeat what you just said for me, please? So if you look at chapter 1278, one of the things is once council approves it, mm -hmm. uh, another legislation piece will be done to uh, uh, make um, uh, arrangements of provisions for improvement. So basically what that means that we hold council in past meetings is once it gets further along, we know how much it's going to cost. We get a bond secure it in this case something falls through. We have a bond to cover the cost. Okay, I heard bond. I thought, I mean, thought we wasn't yeah. doing bonds on this, they, and they, that would be a no from me. But okay, I, okay, I, I heard the word, and I thought, wait a minute. It could so be any, it thanks, be a bond. Thanks for be explaining that. So what, the city won't be on the hook if they fall, if you fall. This, and that's what the bonds for, correct? Right? It could be. It doesn't have to be a bond. It could be other some sort of right. financing. It could be a thing. But it, all right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry? Yes. That uh, passes six to zero. All right. Other business? Uh, any other additional? Mr. Mayor? Sure. Uh, I move to uh, excuse Councilman Cook this evening. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. So far. Second was Grimm. <laughs> yes, okay. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rebold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Uh, I just have a comment uh, in general for council, for the administration. I hope when it comes to this development and in particular the land of Mr. White's, that we can come to some agreement to where intimate domain will not be in play. I don't know what that is, what that would look like. I do know, and I have seen it <clears throat> multiple times, that our city manager is an excellent negotiator. And I have spoken with Mr. White a few times, and I have to say he's an excellent negotiator also. So I, so I hope something can come, we can come to agreement as a city, as an administration, to where we do not have to, in my opinion, steal this man's land. <laughs> and that's all I've got to say on, you, on, that, on that subject. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I'll just say on these, on the end of these are the first few steps in this process. Um, I <clears> share every concern you do, because I've lived here, I've lived here for 40, 40 years, and I, I don't want to track it I've got family members that are scalding me because of the way I'm voting from this, but it is what it is, and it's, you know, what I think is best for me to allow, but we, like he has said, and council, I think, would feel the same, that we need to make sure that we, you know, plan it the best we can so that we don't have traffic issues, because that's not what we want our city to work on, so. Yeah, that's all right, so I'm going to i just like to say I agree with both of you guys. Um, you know, just <clears throat> There's just a lot to consider, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it would be wise of us to really look at uh, the large picture as we as we walk through this. If we if we need to move some pieces and, and if we need to slow a little bit, that doesn't mean we stop. It just maybe we gotta slow and, and work to a better solution on some of these things. But um, I think it's important we get it right. So. <clears throat> when we met with the Choice One engineers. The bottom line was there would be little impact on the traffic. And if there was, there are a number of things that we could do to alleviate the problems. So I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to have that many problems. It does. I mean, people see the raw number and they think, oh, my Lord, it, it really doesn't have much of an impact over the overall thing. Now, that is overall 24 hours of traffic counts. You're going to have your peak hours where it is going to be busy. And you can't deny that. You have to have a little bit of common sense when you look at New Carlisle's traffic, how they have it laid mm -hmm. out. You have 235, which is a single lane highway going north and south. 
unless you widen that, you're going to have traffic problems. You're have downtown you know? if you widen So that. that 235 is going to have to be applied with some common sense logic that no matter how much we do to negate that traffic congestion, at a certain point in time, we're going to have it just by how the road is currently set up. I mean, it literally is a straight line like this. So, but everyone has valid concerns for sure. Um, and these are good problems to have. These are, these are not bad problems to have, you know. But, you know, we got to commend council for wanting to do the right thing for sure. All right. Well, uh, moving on, uh, we will go to executive session tonight to, dis to consider the compensation of employment of public employees. Uh, I do not know if there will be any kind of uh, action afterwards. I don't really know what we're going to get into here, but uh, that's all I can mm -hmm. say. We will go back into normal session afterwards. So executive session is uh, private for council and administrators. It's usually for city employee related business, which is not public. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn and go into executive session to conserve the compensation and employment of public employee, employees. I'm sorry. Second by Ms. Hager. Yes. Yeah, we'll come back into a normal session like this, and if there was any discussion or anything to vote on, which I don't think there is, but I don't know that until we go through that. But yeah, you're, you're definitely welcome to stay in your cars and come back in. <coughs> Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. You don't have much to respect, right? All right, we'll do it. Next session. We're going to take second. All right. Mayor, maybe we go back into. Uh, go ahead. I already did. Oh, I seconded it. <laughs> you need to talk louder. <laughs> Emily heard me. It's our first with a second by me. Lindsay. All right, Roadwald. Yes. Mary Lowry. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. Do we need to excuse Mr. Graham? Well, he no, no. He, he was here. We don't need to excuse him. He's okay. already. He was already here. The only one we had to excuse was Mr. Second. Cook, and that was done. Yeah. All right, Lindsay. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yes.